Hi there. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit more about the TriCaster now, some basic file I.O. operations, that is moving files back and forth to the uh, TriCaster from the staging server. So um, we'll start with the process here. Um, if I want to add things to the DDR over here in this corner, uh, I'm going to need to move files from the server, which is over here, onto um, the, the uh, machine. And the way you do that is by X, uh, Xing out of the program, by leaving the program. And that you can find in the corner over here where it says uh, just a little X there. You have multiple choices here, restart, shutdown, admin, and cancel. Um, what we're going to be doing is going to the admin mode, which is uh, the TriCaster way of saying we're going into Windows. Um, when you launch the TriCaster in admin mode, you get a, a screen that's basically a Windows desktop here with a number of options. And on the side are some um, links that I have made for you to be able to, to work with. Um, one of those links is the C drive. Um, that's Mr. Bu in the background. Say hi, Mr. Bu. There we go. Um, you click on the Z drive and you can... Uh, see the staging server. The staging server is where we put um, the files that you're going to be working with uh, throughout the day. Um, students can export from iMovie into uh, the RAID drive and when you export to the RAID drive that's the Z drive on the TriCaster. So I'm going to click on the, on the Z drive and I can find some really simple sorts of things. Um, let's say I find a um, let's say myself looking shocked video that I want to use for uh, something in, in one of the videos that I'm running. So I'm dragging this video into the today folder which is a shortcut for D TriCaster or TriCaster D I'm sorry uh, TriCaster D Media Raj Report Today which is where we keep all of our, our files stored um, throughout the, the time that we're working with things. So I'm clicking on that, dragging it into the Today folder. When that's done, I click on the button here on the desktop that says Launch TriCaster, and that um, launches the TriCaster application, which you're going to be working with most of the time. Um, it's really straightforward. You're not going to be using Windows for very much on the TriCaster, but it does allow you to move files back and forth as you need to. And in fact, at the end of um, each ROS report, I do the file I.O. to move it back to the server so that I can put it up on uh, YouTube. So, to add things that you just added from there, on the bottom of our screen here, it says add. I'm going to click on that link, and that's going to add uh, a file to our um, collection. And I find my video. Um, this is actually the wrong format, um, but we'll take, we'll take a video and add it to the, drive, the, the uh, timeline by clicking open. And that video shows up in the um, timeline. All right, once you have uh, worked with the, the file I.O. to get things uh, set up, I think we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a little bit more about how to mix the audio on the TriCaster, and then a little bit about setting up inputs to do things like green screen and things like that. So this is a little bit more advanced um, features of the TriCaster so that we can uh, get familiar with all of the ways to work with the, the TriCaster. So let's start first with um, audio uh, mixing here, and that's done over on this panel here. Um, you can see that my live uh, audio is, is uh, being set right here, and you can watch the audio levels as I'm speaking. Notice that it's uh, peaking a little bit. It's going to the 10 spot and that's uh, a little bit hotter than you want it to be. And you can change that on t in two spots. One, you can change the left and right here by um, setting the mixer here, but the, preferably this would be the job of somebody that's doing audio mixing on uh, the board over here. So that person might want to watch the, the, the audio levels of what you're, of what you're uh, setting here as well. But you can also mix a video. Um, let's take oh this after party video. I'm going to run that and while I'm doing that you can see that there's a, a DDR level set right in here. And as I'm running that, I can watch the volume levels that I'm, I'm working with and try my best to make that go all the way up but not to peak. So the secret is to try to get it in that sort of sweet spot uh, above zero 
and before it hits 10 on the, the reads there. So uh, I'm going to try to run that by choosing VCR in my uh, 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 button bar here and then choosing take. And as that's running, and it should be running now, um, you can hear the audio levels of it. And I'm stay real. It beats for it you, so, so listen close. Right. Yeah, my thoughts in every note. And that's an, oh, oh. it's an eight second video, so. Make um, me your yeah. lady. What you want to do is try to make sure that it's well mixed properly. So again, that's what, what you're looking for is to try to get it well mixed so that it matches the audio level of your anchors. If not, we have a problem where people are having to, to turn up and down the volume on the, the broadcast, and that causes problems, and especially uh, difficult problems when we're dealing with audio mixing uh, that's too soft because, you know, uh, we're looking at uh, kids that are, uh, at the end of the hour, teachers that aren't necessarily watching their kids to make sure that they're... Um, paying attention to the newscast, and if the audio levels are low, they're definitely not going to hear anything ab about what's going on in, in the broadcast. So that, those are things to keep in mind. Now let's talk a little bit more about how to work with the different inputs to do things like um, changing a, a, a virtual set or adding a picture behind the, the, the audience to play a little bit with the green screen so that you're familiar with how to, to work with that. Um, I'm going to switch um, and work with input one here. Um, and the way you do that is by using this button here that says input setup. Now we've got choices here at the tab that says input number. I'm going to work with input one. And I'm going to put it in the next spot. You could also make it live if you wanted to. Uh, in fact, let's make that live as we're working with it. I can set a live set and a live mat, and that will affect my um, input. Um, let's say we'll, we'll choose a demo uh, set. So live set is the actual sets that you work with, the, the sets being the, the setup, uh, all the desks, all the chairs, all the background, to make it look as if you're in an, a, another studio. So we're going to switch to a, a live set that's in a, a certain scene. We'll use the demo studio here. And um, we're going to use the center um, shot for it. So I'm going to click in back to camera one. And um, if I go from green screen um, to the live set and the live mat and you can see how that blocks out all the background all of the background in what you're doing um, on the the set um, some some things to keep in mind first of all here the color um, picking the color is very important if you notice here where it says pick color in the corner that's a, a color picker that allows me to block out how much of the, the, the set I'm going to work with. So if I'm going back to cam one, you can see that as I pick colors, it's going to affect the quality of what you're looking for. And I'm finding a spot somewhere in the color picker that picks up the majority of the 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 majority of the of the set and makes it look good. So Back to camera one. Um, let's say I didn't want that as my background. Let's say I wanted a, uh, a picture as the background, and that's fairly simple to do as well. And it's actually a pretty good uh, effect. It's ways that we've been able to work with different locations here at Roz. Um, instead of using the Live Set button here um, over on, on this thing uh, in the Input Setup spot for Input 1, I'm going to turn that off, and that makes my set look completely dark. And that dark set of, is where you're going to be putting your picture by using the effects button. So then we switch back to DDR picture here. And uh, then I can choose a picture as my effects in the effects pal palette right over here. Um, it, again, I'm at the DDR. I'm using, under the effects palette here, I'm going to choose pick, and that puts the picture underneath what I, I'm seeing. So as you look at camera one, the picture that's selected over here becomes the picture in the background of our shot here. So that's how you make that effect work. It's a really nice thing to, to add some depth to what you're doing and to kind of give the effect that we've got a better studio than we really do.